But the biggest issue right now, the biggest political fight, the back and forth, other than the usual things, which we'll get into today, COVID response and law and order, and the lawlessness that Democrats have embraced. Biggest thing I have for you today is on the post office. That's right. Former employer of Newman from the Seinfeld show. And the post office is not something you would usually think is at the center of a major election debate, but it is because, well, the libs have completely lost their minds. They are in a panic about this. They are freaking out because they say the president is trying to defund the USPS, the United States Postal Service, that this is actually happening right now. And this is this is underway. And over the weekend, as I was down in in North Carolina, I would check in on Twitter occasionally, see what was going on. It was very apparent. That they would see that that liberals out there would see things and immediately like the boogeyman of Trump was appearing from inside the post office box. There were claims that post box post office boxes were being removed as part of this Trump plot. And these things were going viral. There were claims that uh, that there were locks on post office box boxes as part of this plan, as part of this plot. And sure enough, it's all complete nonsense. But the fight is not over. Here's what we need to know about this. Uh, oh, oh, and before I get into the the rundown of what's really happening, they even had a protest outside of the postmaster general's home because that's a really constructive way to have your voice heard if you're a complete psychopath uh, they, they decided that they were going to gather together and try to frighten him uh, DeJoy is the man who runs who is the postmaster general they, they wanted to get together and and terrify him that's somehow going to advance their cause about how we need the postal service so here's what's really going on Okay, the the conspiracy theory stuff, let's dispense with that first. There were there were some photos shown of of uh, USPS, you know, those blue mailboxes that we all know being picked up and moved. That's not unusual. That was that's just consolidating and making sure that they're trying to be they're trying to be more efficient. This is a big part of this. I'll get into it. Um, The locking the post office boxes. I mean, some of these are actually security measures so that people can't. Uh, do this form of phishing where they'll actually steal stuff out of the post office boxes by going through the little envelope slot. Uh, But none of this had anything to do with Donald Trump or even the fight over funding. So this was just all paranoia, but it's really out there. I mean, Taylor Swift, that's right, the, the famous pop star, to her, I don't know, 100 million Twitter followers, she has an enormous Twitter following, she tweeted out, Trump's calculated dismantling of USPS proves one thing clearly. He is well aware that we do not want him as our president. He's chosen to blatantly cheat and put millions of Americans' lives at risk in an effort to hold on to power. Now, you might say, Buck, why are you even giving a a second thought to Taylor Swift's thoughts on election cheating and tampering and the United States Postal Service? And I'll just tell you, uh, unfortunately, there's no uh, th- there's no special status. There's nothing in pop stars that doesn't allow them to influence the opinion of their enormous, their legions of ignorant fans. So Taylor Swift says this, and you would say, "Well, Buck, obviously, what what does she know?" The answer is like nothing, other than you know how to hit that high C and dance around and write some songs. Uh, while that while that's all true, the truth for the electorate is that she still carries a lot of sway and that there'll people that will read people will read that and they'll say oh my gosh trump is trying to steal steal the election uh by destroying the usps as if he's able to do this so rapidly as if this is some some plan oh we have uh we have representative maxine waters also said and this was on Twitter, we're all hearing from seniors. They need their medicine, their groceries. They need their disability and Social Security checks. Why are you harming us by slowing down the mail system and destroying the USPS? 
Don't you understand how important the system is, right? We're all supposed to be so upset over this. Well, here's the problem, Maxine Waters. For one, Social Security checks don't get sent in the mail anymore. I would hope that a member of Congress would know that, but I, I hope for too much. Here's what's really happening. All right, at the, at the very top level, the 30,000-foot view, Democrats, Democrats are pushing for a massive change in the way that uh, ballots will be cast this election. Let me, and this is the, our, our media class, because our Bolsheviks are journalists, and they are incredibly ignorant, and they don't care to know what they don't know. They just know that they've got talking points, they've got propaganda that they want to spew. And our media class is out there now insisting that there is no difference between absentee ballots and universal mail-in ballots. This is now there are some variations state to state and but in general terms you have to apply for you have to you have to request an absentee ballot. So an actual human being has to make a request for an absentee ballot. There are chain of custody controls over that ballot. And there's an entirely different procedure for it that's in place and has been in place for a long time. I voted absentee in uh, the 2008 election because I was overseas, I believe. Yeah, I, I was. I, yeah, I was overseas um, in Iraq, I think, at the time. So that's something that, we, that people do. And that's that's well established. What Democrats are demanding is that everybody will just get ballots sent out to anybody who's on the voter rolls. So you don't have to request it. They're going to send out. So there's going to be live ballots everywhere, all over the place. going to be live ballots just getting sent out. And there's no chain of custody. No one knows who is getting it. Or do they still live there? What state are they in? I, this is an astonishing, an astonishing open door for fraud, which is why the Democrats want it in the first place. And President Trump addressed this with universal mail-in voting. Play 17. As you know, the Democrats aren't approving the proper funding for postal, and they're not approving the proper funding for this ridiculous thing that they want to do, which is all mail-in voting. If universal, you could call it mail-in voting. Again, absentee voting is great. You request, I'm an absentee voter because I requested, I got, and then I sent in my vote. So that works out very well. That's what we've had. But now they want to send in millions and millions of ballots. And you see what's happening. They're being lost. They're being discarded. They're finding them in piles. It's going to be a catastrophe. So, and this is beyond the post office. But Louis DeJoy is, is working very hard. The post office has for decades lost billions and billions of dollars. I read numbers today that are unthinkable. And what they want to do now is hit the post office with millions of ballots from certain states. And if you look at what happened in New York and Virginia and various other places, it's a catastrophe. They're losing 20 percent of the votes. Nobody knows what's happened. They are losing a lot of ballots. We've had delays over a month of delays in a New York congressional race because of all the mail in balloting. There are preparations that have to be taken for this. There are procedures that have to be put in place, and there is time needed to do all of that. We, we don't have that. Democrats are making this demand, and as I've said to you, and I really do believe this, if they did get universal mail-in balloting and they lost, they would claim that universal mail-in balloting that they had demanded was the reason they lost, that there was cheating, there was fraud, Russia, whatever. It doesn't, you have to, you have to keep in mind it doesn't have to make sense. Their arguments don't make sense. It's emotion. It's shouting. It's the mob. It doesn't matter. If they can get away with it, if it works, they'll say it. What's really going on with the post office? What's really happening there? Turns out, and this is a shock, I'm sure, to none of you, it turns out that the post office is losing billions of and billions of dollars. In fact, since 2007, USPS has lost $78 billion. And its usefulness is way down. We are entering an era of Amazon and Zoom and everything virtual, and they still have some postal routes where they're delivering mail down into the Grand Canyon by donkey, 
and where people will sometimes, employees of whom there are uh, 600,000 USPS employees across the country, but in some instances they will travel almost 200 miles a day to hit a couple of hundred mailboxes. This is highly, highly inefficient. They constantly complain now they've had to prepay some of their health benefits for the USPS. They claim that's the problem. This was a reform in, in recent years. But that's not the problem. The problem is the USPS is poorly run and is losing a whole lot of money. We're talking about over almost almost $100 billion over a decade. That's, that's real money. That's all just the taxpayer sending checks to the USPS. This is a system that has been failing for a long time. And I understand that Democrats love this for a number of reasons. One is they always will say things like we need we, we can't privatize. What about the post office? What about roads? Those are the two things which are mentioned in the Constitution, but are not, in fact, stated as sole obligations of the state. Liberals forget that there's not a constitutionally created post office. There's just the government can create a post office. And it did, but maybe it doesn't need to anymore, or maybe it needs to dramatically change it. Postal uh, overall mail volume hit its peak in 2006, 213 billion pieces of mail. As of last year, it was down 33%. If you're running a business, and remember, that's not pandemic times, that's last year, that's 2019 with a booming economy. If you're running a business during a booming economy, and you're down 33% over the course of a decade, you're in trouble. You're going to have to dramatically restructure or else you may face bankruptcy, right? That's the reality of it. And yet with the government, they can always claim they need more taxpayer dollars. With the government, they can always claim that there is a next step, a next phase for them. Oh, that's right. We the people write a check. That's the that's what the that's what the Democrats are demanding here. But the post office has been failing for years now, you know, like the failing New York Times. No, the post office really has been failing for years. And all of this stuff, these conspiracies. Oh, DeJoy isn't up for this. Um, DeJoy, who is the postmaster general, they keep calling him a mega donor. Yeah, he's a donor to Trump. He also took a company a trucking company from 10 employees in 1983 to 7,000 employees. And he stayed on as the CEO of XPO Logistics when it bought his company, which is a supply chain business. So this is kind of like having a mini Jeff Bezos in a good way running the post office, which is a good idea. When was the last time you went to your post office box and looked inside and were like, oh, this is great. I got all this great stuff. 50% 50% of what you get in your, in your mailbox is marketing, which is a, a nice way of saying junk mail. That's why I always say environmentalists are unserious until they stop. Think of all the resources, wasted paper, wasted printing. They got to get rid of this junk mail for us. Then I'll listen to them on the recycling and all these other things they want. But well, we're, we're just, just masses. I, I go to the post office, I mean, post office box that I have, mostly to take things out of it to throw out so that they don't completely fill up my post office box, uh, you know, my mailbox, I should say. And then there's no room for the bills that I get bills and I get junk mail. That's it. Like once a year, I get a wedding invitation. Thanks, producer Mark. High five. That's it. And yet we're told that it's all because Trump wants to destroy it. It's, it's all Trump's fault. You see, once again, He's destroying the post office, even though it's funded already until 2021. What's their complaint? He doesn't want to give the post office $25 billion of bailout money for being poorly run for years. Hey, Team Buck, thank you so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you like this video, please click that little thumbs up button so then it will log as liked. And also, if you want to see more great content from the first, please click subscribe.